Physical attractiveness is extensively studied in departments of psychology. How big of a determinant of success is it apart from IQ or any of the other big five traits? Um, that's tough one because physical attractiveness is a very complex trait. Um, it's also, for example, it's a marker of health. And of course, health is a, mar is a prerequisite for success. So um, I, you can't take attractiveness as a unitary dimension and measure it sufficiently accurately. Wait, I should back up on that. No one that I know of has taken physical attractiveness as a unitary concept, measured it accurately, and then pitted it against IQ and the big five to see if it, to what degree it adds incremental validity to the prediction of long-term success. But physical, but, and so I can't give you a technical answer. You know, I can say, well, in a complex job over the long run, IQ accounts for maybe 20% of the variance in success, leaving 80% there for random events and, and the big five traits and connection networks and, and family background and all those other things, gender perhaps, that all the other things that determine success. Physical, we know that, physical, that people who are physically attractive though are given the benefit of doubt by other people. They, they benefit from the positive halo effect and the positive halo effect is the propensity of people to assume good things about someone if there is one outstanding thing about them that's easily evident that's good and so if you're if you're if you stand up straight with your shoulders back so that's rule one in 12 rules for life then people are going to see you as more attractive if you're symmetrical you're more attractive if you're thin but not too thin you're more attractive um, well and then there's like good skin and good teeth and good hair and and all of those things and proper proportions and youth and there's a whole slew of things that 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 feed into that if you are characterized by a plethora of those features then people are also going to assume that you're more competent and more um and more more worth having around let's say but the problem is is that you are so separating out the attractiveness from the things the attractiveness are is correlated with is very hard that's why you have to do multivariate analysis that's multi variable analysis in any complex social science because a lot of these traits overlap so but you know you can you can there's there's some some things you can do about that postural adjustment is helpful to work out with weights that's extraordinarily helpful that that increases improves your posture and makes you more confident and 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 you can dress reasonably well and intelligently and um, all of those things to to help yourself capitalize on whatever attractiveness you can muster how do you dress so well any tips well you know thank you um, I started buying nice clothes let's say this year really I had some decent suits before that um, I did some research online to find out who good suit manufacturers were you can look that up but in before this tour I went and talked to a good tailor uh, expensive place I, I felt terrible spending so much money on clothing um, but I felt that if I was going to go talk to it's been 200,000 people that I was going to do it right and and I was going to invest in some decent clothes and even though it it hurt my um, cheap northern Alberta soul to do it um, it was definitely worth it so you go talk to someone who knows what they're doing go talk to an actual tailor and 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 you can do some research online there's lots of resources online that are devoted towards devoted to helping men figure out how to dress three-piece suits look really good um, I, I've got them tailored and fitted so they're not bespoke suits they're off the rack but they've been tailored and that makes a big difference uh, all the subtle things that tailors do they tuck it in around the waist they cut it to your body all of those things help it's really good to have a good pair of shoes a couple of nice ties I learned how to tie a full Windsor knot recently and that actually helps uh, you don't want your tie to look too skinny um, lots of people have been dressing up to come to my talk so it's nice to see a lot of young men come well dressed often in three-piece suits but not always and it's really good to see them dressed like grown-ups I think that's a real plus um, I had a rule that I didn't write in 12 rules which was dress like the person you want to be that's I kind of took that from Carl from from Nietzsche because Nietzsche said um, every great man is an actor of his own ideal 
It's a very nice aphorism and basically what it meant was that sometimes you have to act out what you want to be before you become it. You have to pretend. It's not a lie. It's, it's really a pretense like children pretend to be a father before they grow up and become a father. It's a form of practice. And so tip one might be figure out who you want to be. Tip two might be, well, then dress like that person. That's a good start. And because I think if you want to become who you want to be, then no detail is too small to overlook. And certainly it isn't exactly that people judge you by their clothes, by your clothes, although they do to some degree. It's that if whatever you can have going for you, you might as well have going for you. That's how it looks to me. And certainly my experience has been that the response to my improved wardrobe has indicated that the investment was clearly worth it, um, indisputably and clearly worth it. And it's nice to be dressed sharply to go in front of an audience. It's a sign of respect to the audience. There's other ways of showing respect to an audience, but that's certainly one. And so it's been extraordinarily worthwhile. I would say if you're going for a job interview, if you're at any critical point in your life, then you should dress the part because you want to do everything you can to tip the scales in not in your favor exactly, but in favor of having the right thing happen. When I went on, on tour in 2018, before I went out, I thought I wanted to do this like 100% right, or at least as close to that as I could manage. So I went out and bought some expensive suits. And I spent way more money on it. This is one of them, actually. You look great, way, by the way. Thank you, okay. thank you. Way more money than I ever thought I'd spend on clothes. And I really felt quite bad about it. You know, I thought maybe it was an extravagance, but I thought, no way, man, I'm gonna see if I can nail this dead on. And I'm gonna be speaking to, you know, 100,000 people. I'm gonna look as sharp as I possibly can. And uh, one of the consequences of that has been that young men in particular come to the lecture tour dressed up in suits, three-piece suits, they're, or the couples come and they're dressed up like they're coming to a wedding. or So that's really something. And uh, Why do you think that is? Why do you, is, is it because you set that they're standard? They're sick acting like kids. Okay. You know, our whole culture pushes the idea that teenage life or even childhood for that matter, but teenage life is some sort of pinnacle and then everybody dresses down so they look, especially men, they look like overgrown 10 year olds and there's something extremely demeaning about that. And so to provide people with the opportunity to dress up in a, in a classic manner and to look like adults, to present themselves in that manner, there's something very attractive about that because we haven't done that in our culture. That's been, I would say, downplayed in importance or or or, or for for si certainly since the 1960s who's yeah. to blame for that because you recall anytime you would fly in an airplane if you see old school pictures people were dressed in three piece suits to go on an airplane this is in the 60s i assume yeah. and then now you see someone like mark zuckerberg wear a t-shirt to give a speech in front of a ted talk or something like that so well who's some to blame of it for this some down? of it's just fashion you know i mean fashion moves around and then and it's, it usually drifts from the top down. And so when formality becomes the norm, it, but that drifts down, to, say, to the working class, then the upper class thinks, well, we can't do that because that would, you know, associate us with the unfashionable people. And then they dress down. And so then that drifts down the hierarchy. And so there's some of it, some of it's just fashion, but a lot of it too is this idea that th this sort of, reflexive rebellious attitude that anything that violates traditional norms or even anything that's associated with patriarchal oppression and adulthood is to be eliminated in favor of what's hypothetically a more free individuality but it's not because everybody looks the same i was in washington four or five years ago maybe longer than that it's probably longer than that when i first went in the summer and one of the things that really struck me all these people wandering around these great monuments is all the men looked like overgrown 10 year olds. They, they looked exactly like their kids, except they were bigger. They looked like they'd been inflated mm. with a bicycle pump. And I thought this is weird that, that adults are dressing like children. I talked to my father about this years ago um, because he always wore a suit when he was, he was a teacher. He's still alive, he, he's a teacher. and. He always wore a suit and I asked him why one day and he said because it was his way of showing respect for the students. And I mean, I'm not saying that everyone who doesn't dress in the suit is being disrespectful, but there's something about outfitting yourself for the task at hand.
And there's also something about attempting to put some effort into presenting your, putting your best foot forward. And I don't really buy that it takes more time in the morning argument. It takes a bit more time, but once you, like be, before I went on this tour, I went through all my clothing and I tossed out everything that didn't fit, and which included a number of suits that were old, and I had to organize them. And that took about a day to get my closet in order. 